gang, today I get to show you something supremely, where's my hat? Hey gang, today I have something supremely awesome to show you. Normally if I'm gonna show off a piece of rack gear, I'll unrack it and I'll hold it, but this thing is so filled with cables, I'm not doing that. So, what I'm gonna do is just hover it like this. This is the Red 7 Multi-Stereo Line Mixer. It is like, you know, the whole Bradshaw glorious thing. Like, it's kind of like all of that distilled into one beautiful, super incredibly useful rack unit. So, so how do you, so how do you demo something that uh, switches and routes and blends and like, what what are what are the like, what are the I don't even know. Uh, so that whole opening was basically like my rack essentially, uh, and you know, full disclosure, most of my life, whenever you hear sort of rack tones, it is like duct taped together. Uh, it's only set up for that moment, and then it all gets unplugged and repatched to other stuff. But this, I'm trying to put together like Michael's rack uh, right there in my home studio here. Because I gotta say, like, it is gloriously fun to play through all of this stuff. All right, let's start at the beginning of the unit, the input. You could run mono or stereo. You could run anything. Don't run the speaker out into it, but any line into it. The preamp, uh, something from your load box, uh, your um, Kemper Axe Effects, whatever is going to be your amp sound hits the front end. There's an insert point on the front, which is really helpful because if I want to take my pedal board over and pop it in to my rack, it's really simple. There's an in and out, you could patch that through. Now we come to a bank of three switchable loop points. These are running in series. So we're going boom, 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 straight through them. One goes into two, into three, and then out. Something like this is a good place for a compressor. Typically you would see like a DBX 160 style compressor, uh, perhaps an EQ. It's a nice place for an EQ. Uh, and perhaps also it's a good place for a chorus. It's something that will go straight in and will transform the sound, and that is going to everything afterwards. That's why something like a compressor and an EQ is, it's really good place because those are initial tone shaping things. Those are sort of like on the amp side of things before you get into effects. But nonetheless, it is a good place for a chorus. Uh, I believe in like Lukather and Landau's racks, very often they would hit a chorus and that would sort of split the signal for them in stereo with the Red 7 multi-stereo line mixer. Uh, these are mono or stereo line, uh, loops. The next section we get to is three parallel loops and your dry signal. If you want to hear just your dry signal, you switch the dry signal in, which can be affected by those initial three series loops, but you always have that big, raw, unadulterated amp sound, which is fantastic because some of these old rack units, uh, they have what's called tone suck. Uh, which means like, if, you know, if you have all the stereo is happening, you know, it sounds great. But if you just don't have any effects or have a little uh, reverb or something, you're like, well, the reverb's nice, but what happened to the rest of my tone? Feels like 
you know, it went through some 12-bit converters and out, and it just doesn't, it's missing something. So this prevents that. You get your big guitar sound always. Bam, dry signal. Now, if you want to add, let's say a little reverb, boom, comes up parallel. So your dry signal's here, you call your effect up, if you turn the output down on your effects unit, that's gonna change your blend. If you wanna just hear 100% wet reverb, turn off your dry signal. And now you're hearing your sound straight through this reverb box. You've got three of these loops, so again, dry signal, you could call up a delay, reverb, a micro pitch shift, and again, you're balancing that with your main dry signal, and then the outputs of these devices and that's your blend. It may feel like that's a lot going on, but really at the core is your dry signal is always there. That's your guitar sound. And everything else is kind of just coming up around it uh, in a really beautiful way. So you could have the wonkiest effect unit, like it's dying. And you could feel really comfortable because your guitar sound's always there. If the effect unit died, it would just, the effect would go away but your sound would still be big and uh, awesome. If this was all the unit did, it's still fantastic, but it keeps going and you don't have to use every loop. I'm set up right now with one of the series loops in the beginning, one of the effects loops, and I'm using both of the aux sends loops, which are next. The aux sends loops allow you to take, let's start with the dry signal. You get to split that off and decide how much you want to send over to the unit, as opposed to the effects loops before where it sends the whole thing with the sends you're sending a little at a time so if, if i want to add a little bit of delay you just turn the mixer send a little of your dry signal over to your delays now what's great about this is let's say like we talked about in the beginning let's say i want to send a little of a chorus affected sound to my echoes now i could go over to the effects loop and send signal from that loop over to the delays. And you'll hear in the reverb or delay a sound that is affected rather than just straight dry. <laughs>
So what happens after the mixer? Well, you could either send to a power amp, stereo power amp, because you're coming out stereo in all likelihood. Uh, so you send stereo channels to the channels in the power amp, and then these go out to your stereo cabinets. The way I have it running is I'm going straight to the DAW. It's fantastic. I actually don't even have a power amp in this scenario, which is shockingly uh, awesome sounding. I had no problems with it. I'm running my Saldano X88R directly into the multi-stereo line mixer. It's getting the effects treatment, and then it's going out into my DAW. From there, you can just put an IR on it. I made IRs directly for this reason. Uh, so if you take a look at my THU Super Cab IRs, I call them power amp powered IRs. Uh, so there are clean IRs in this, but I also captured all of the IRs with the classic legendary power amps. So it's getting that sort of extra depth and presence that you would switch on. It's getting the tonality. And I thought it made a huge difference. It sounded awesome. So it's the sound that I was used to. And there's one more output if you want to take your stereo out that has all the effects on it. And then there's a dry out. So you could either run a wet dry wet system or you could even just capture them in your DAW. You have your stereo effects and then you have your dry ones. Let's say you finish a session and the next day you or your producer says, uh, what were we thinking? That's uh, a hot mess. You can just wipe the slate clean. And then if you want, you could run out of your DAW again into the effects and re-effect it, or you just apply something in the box at, at that point, but you are you have like a safety in your dry amp. So I hope this sheds some light on this sort of mysterious box. Uh, but check out Red 7. They make a ton of really uh, great sounding products. And this really is, it stands alone in the product world. Uh, there really isn't anything you could go out and get today that does this for you. Uh, in one box it, it's it's kind of like the rack godsend there so um yeah thank you to red seven this is the best <laughs> all right gang thanks for watching we'll catch you later